When you're done with this, I got something I'd like you to try since you're a fox, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. I will, uh, I'll quit out here. What, what is it, what is it you had in, in, uh, in mind? There exists a CYOA style Taz. You're a fox against Marth. Last game on the, of the set on Battlefield 3 stocks. A Taz? Okay. Oh, Taz your own adventure. I see. Okay, yeah. What 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 did you have in mind for this? Um, did you want me to like analyze this? Because if that's the case, I would be happy to. Uh, I just wanted to like rehash some some uh, some political things before I get into it that I had uh, seen. The most important of which, give it your own run through. See how you do. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Let's actually let's do that right now. This is this is content. Uh, Shoutouts to B and D games. Uh, anyways, I I didn't spend that much airtime talking about this. You know what? I wanted to say some things about the union stuff, but I can do that after. Um, so let's let's see what's up. Has your own adventure. You're playing Fox in the last game of your set against Marth. Okay. As you watch through the video, there will be moments where you're presented with two choices. Every choice will make uh, you make will either result in you losing a stock or Marth losing a stock. Interesting. Okay. Each option will have a unique timestamp. In order to choose the option you want, you must manually go to the timestamp. Marked by chapters. Yeah, I saw that in the, in the little bar. Pause the video if you need time to think, as waiting too long may spoil you to other alternate outcomes. Okay, well, let's see how I do. Note that the locations of each choice are randomly spread throughout the video. Okay. So let's uh, let's go to game start. It'll slow down and you, you see your choices. Okay. Let's get started. All right. Oh boy, so it's a so it's a actual like Taz. It's not like one of those human theory. You get knocked down on the platform. How do you counter uh Marth's up tilt? Um Okay, here's the thing, right? Let's go through what I think for, for either of these options, right? Slide off DI is the conventional pro player option and is in fact very good for avoiding up tilt or up air against Marth. Um, whereas it seems like DI down and tech would just make it so that you you sort of open yourself up to another up tilt, right? I don't know if there's enough time. Maybe there is. Um, either way, I've seen, let's see, I've seen Zane like uh, cover the slide off, but... God, I don't know. Both of these... Okay, here's the thing. Both of these are good options, but I feel like Slide Off DI is a better option. Especially because Marth is here. He's behind the word off in Slide Off. If he up tilts you here, he's getting the front... the, the hitbox that's in front of him, so it's going to send you inward. So it's going to make it easier to slide off and then, like, I don't know, hit him with forward air or something. Whereas if you tech, that only gives you however many frames, I guess. If you, if you tech, if you DI down and you tech in place, if you tech in or tech away, Marth can cover it. But if you tech in place, it might actually be, like, you might come out on top. You could, like, drop through and get it down air, maybe? I don't know. Look. Tazes are pretty crazy. I'm just gonna go with the slide off option and see what that gets me. Slide off DI. What what does this do for me? I guess I chose right. Marth responds with invincibility. How do you evade him? 
do not go to ledge. Whatever you do against a Marth player, do not go to ledge. This is a bad idea. Um, so I think anyways. Fox is at low percent here, which means that Marth should be able to gimp you every time. If you go to ledge at high percent, um, that's not actually a terrible idea because you can ledge tech. But 23%, you're not going to be able to tech those down tilts. Uh, it'll, it'll be easy. Easy, consistent for the Marth. Platform movement does technically leave you vulnerable, but there's a lot more room for you to, like, literally run away from Marth. Uh, and I've had more success with that in the past. In fact, going to ledge is something that I used to have a habit of doing when I only practice with 20XX, uh, like the insanely cracked uh, level 9 CPUs. I would go to ledge, um, but... The thing is, right, CPUs are bad at covering ledge uh, when you're on the ledge. Like, they're bad at sort of playing around that. And I learned very quickly on Slippy Online, going to ledge is not usually a good idea because it puts you in the corner uh, and it sort of limits your options right away. Platform movement is a much more reliable uh, form of evasion, I think. 1150, right? Platform movement. Let's see what's up. Let's see how good am I at the game. Probably not very Run, like run, run away, dude! Run the fuck away. That that's that's my uh, my take here. And it looks like it's working out for this fox so far. All right, looks like I picked correctly. You're now up. Uh, Three stocks to one. How do you proceed? Camp. Camp. This is the correct answer. Every fucking Fox player falls for this, including myself sometimes. You do not want to get extra aggressive against Marth, right? Marth does not do well. This is one of the key reasons why I think that Fox wins this matchup handily, and it shouldn't even be a debate. When Fox camps, Marth does not have a solid answer. When Fox gets aggressive, that's when Marth has all the answers. Martha's a very good defensive character, but as, uh, as, as many a Fox have shown, his weakness is when he overextends and tries to go on offense because a lot of his offensive stuff is unsafe. Like down tilt, sure, uh, you know, you could get a lot of uh, pokes in neutral and it's relatively safe, but down tilt isn't usually a huge open up. Um, Fox, on the other hand, is like glass cannon on offense. Like you run in, you die against the top Marth, it, like in the task setting like this. Uh, let's go back to 6 minutes 13. Camp a little. See how Marth likes it. I guess I picked right again. Wow, Look at you, boy. Look how good I am at the at the fucking theory of melee. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm going to do something that is unprecedented on this stream. I'm going to talk shit about Leffen. Nobody can believe this, right? Um, but this is the the... That last stock is why I say is one of the significant reasons why there's no there's really no world where uh, Marth beats Fox. Fox beats Marth handily because um, Fox has more room to play the game than Marth does. That's not to say Marth can't win, but Marth has to play Fox's game. Fox dictates how the game goes, right? He's an overhyped man child. That is true. Um, I will, I will definitely agree with that. It, you know, the man is obviously very good at Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. He has results to that effect. And obviously that I have to respect about him. But I do not have to respect his opinions because he has no fucking clue what he's talking about. Um, you know, it's possible to be good at something and have no clue how it actually works. It's, it's like, um, what is it, superstition? It's like if you're, if you're a uh, mechanic, a very skilled mechanic, and you have no clue the actual physics or engineering theory that goes into any of the things that you're working on in a car. You're still a good mechanic, but I would not take your opinion on anything. I would just send my car in to have it fixed. Um, you know, Leffen is kind of like that. 
I would not ask him for his opinion on anything in Melee. Following Leffen's advice, I think, in, in what matchups are good and what matchups are bad, will make you a worse player. Uh, but if you look at the way he plays, if you observe what he does, that would help, probably, in the, in the instances where he is successful. Uh, that has been my uh, drama bait, discourse bait for this, uh, for this stream. Yeah, I guess I just spoiled how that uh, how this video uh, goes. I could make that into a segment. In fact, that'd be good melee content. I think. Yeah. Let's see what happens if you pick the wrong options. So we're going back. First choice was slide off or di down and tech. Let's see what happens if you tech. Right. Yeah. Yep, there we go. He did what I thought you might be able to do, but I wasn't entirely sure. He tried to drop through and down air, but Marth is uh, actionable first. I'll accept his call for a wombling ban because it did water down the IC matchups uh, tremendously. That's true. That's one of the few things I'll defend him on. At the same time that he also called for a, a full puff ban, just out of saltiness over losing, losing to HBox sealed his fate with me. Yeah, he just doesn't... I don't think he takes losing well. Um, and he it's like a uh, broken clock thing. Uh, that's only a melee. He also tried getting into Tekken and was an absolute asshole over it. Oh yeah, I know he's played other fighting games and has not exactly had a good track record with uh, his opinions in those games. Leffen, here's one thing I want to say about Leffen that I'm, I'm not going to be as mean about, but I think is important to take away when you're analyzing a game as complex as a fighting game or as, you know, melee. Leffen sometimes arrives at the right conclusions potentially even for on the surface the right reasons right the wobbling bin it it is like it's sort of antithetical to the game of melee it is an infinite combo right that takes the gameplay out of the game it right there's like there's no answer for it ICs get one grab and then that's it theoretically um you know handoffs there's still an amount of that but there's ample opportunity for the ice climbers to mess up the thing is Leffen uses the wrong process to arrive at his conclusions. The way he arrives at his conclusions is wrong. It is flawed. And I think it's based a lot off of spite. I mean, there's a lot of spiteful people in the world, whatever. Obviously, I'm not inside the man's head, but uh, it's clear that the way he thinks does not reliably lead him to, to properly understand what is or isn't good about, uh, I don't know, certain controversial mechanics in the game. He's incredibly spiteful, there's no doubt there. Yeah, and, and you know, this is, this shows in some of the things he had to say about the box. I'm basically an uncritical box supporter, uh, and I know some people feel like it's a cheater controller and whatever, but I think I think Hax's line of argumentation is stronger here that, like, the answer is instead to buff GameCube controllers as much as possible to try to achieve parity with the box, because for me, banning the box will never be an option, right? That is... a uh, a real solution to a real problem that people in the melee community experience, which is arthritis. Um, you know, uh, for a lot of people, yes, you could potentially with good uh, health routines and exercises and stretches, you could get around that. You could evade it for some time. But for some people, they have a genetic predisposition to arthritis or whatever. For some people, it's unavoidable. And so that has to be taken into account. And it's very clear that Leffen is not doing that. Um, Yeah, so, and, and, uh, although he, obviously, he raised some valid critiques of the box with the, like, oh, it can do things that the GameCube controller can't, right? And so the answer then was, like, well, let's see if we can't get the GameCube controller with mods in game or whatever to be able to do those things, or if we can sort of raise the manufacturing standards of, uh, GameCube controllers instead of arbitrarily nerfing the box, because everything the box does is possible in-game. Like, when you press right on the box, this was one of the things, the 1.0 cardinal, when you press right on the box, there's nothing, like, magical happening. You're going to the right. It's just that sometimes on a GameCube controller, you can't press all the way right. Um, not on factory settings, anyway. In fact, if you wanted to, like, this is a vanilla GameCube controller, right? I don't know if it can achieve 1.0 cardinal or not. If it can't, I could just sand down the little notches here, and then congratulations, I've now achieved 1.0 Cardinal on my shitty vanilla GameCube controller. 
Some people requ require specialized controllers due to things like muscular uh, dystrophy, hence why Microsoft made the adaptive controller, for example. Banning the box sends a message to those uncomfortable to need that, telling them they can't play at the, at his level. Precisely. And I think, I think that if we want the Melee community to thrive and to grow and to be a welcoming place for all competitors interested, we need to keep options like the box very wide open. Because, you know, there are people with uh, muscular problems, with uh, problems in their tendons, in their... Uh, uh, in their bones or cartilage, whatever, who need that, you know, because they you know, they want to play their favorite game. But at the same time, this might not be the most ergonomic way to do it for some people because, I don't know, you've seen a lot of people do this, the, the claw. I do that sometimes. But, yeah. Anyways, let's get back to Marth beating up Fox for choosing the thing that I didn't choose. Nice. Oh, no. You died. So then the other one was, um, let's see, I picked first choice, slide off DI, go to 313. What was the next choice? It was um, go to ledge or do some platform movement. Let's see what happens if you go to ledge, right? This is the one I did not pick. Eh. <laughs> Awesome Sauce did a video talking about controllers in the same manner. He showed off the third-party GameStop controller, which is banned because it has an admittedly awful turbo switches. Banning that, I get. Oh, yeah, I actually have that exact controller. I, I um... Uh... It's somewhere around. Uh, I used to use it to play, like, Mario Kart and stuff, because I needed another controller so my friend and I could play multiplayer. Um, and then I got a real GameCube controller and re realized, wow, that thing was a piece of junk. But it is right to be banned because it does something that a human physically can't do. Which is turbo mode. It, you know, the button presses itself. Bang that I get, but things like the box don't do things like that. Exactly. On the, on the box, it's just one button press is one button press. And that's it. You know, maybe, maybe it's like, since it's digital inputs, it gets slightly more mileage out of da 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 da, but that ultimately doesn't matter. Um, especially because you have to relearn the whole game. In fact, it's probably a much larger, uh, it's much more visible in competitive play that box players visibly move differently than GameCube controller players. Um, and that wouldn't change if you, like, nerf the directional buttons or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I think I've seen that awesome sauce video. And anyways, before I unpaused here, I realized there was something that happened last stream that I didn't acknowledge. Somebody followed, uh, Carla's Wild Ride followed me a couple days ago, uh, and I don't think I saw it on stream, so... Thank you for the follow right now. Wanted to make sure I got that. I see it the way SRL does universally. It's only a allowed if it was included first party, which to my knowledge only happened twice. The NES Max Advantage, the TurboGrafx-16 controllers. Un otherwise, it's unfair. Yeah, that's right. Things that, like if, if, if a certain functionality was built into a first party controller, then like, yeah, because it's clearly intended, but then otherwise, no. Yeah, I, I agree with that, I think. So let's see what happens when this poor bastard fox goes to ledge. Uh, he gets chain grabbed and uh, comboed across, across the stage for his troubles. Uh, Ken, where are you? He does the dancing blade. Beautiful. Nice. So then this was the camp option. That was the one that I... No, that's, the, uh, that's actually the last option. Where's the uh, platform movement? Platform movement, there we go. So, now let's see what happens when you get aggressive, you, you overextend as Fox. This is literally just a, uh, like, this is like a, um, a sort of watered down language version of overextend and like get impatient, kind of. Because at this point, you've already been playing reasonably aggressively if you're playing the matchup correctly. Um, as far as offense goes, obviously as Fox, you don't want to run in, you want to sort of make Marth come to you, but on, on the, uh, like in the combo game, you really do want to make Marth, uh, scared of you. Let's go to 16 minutes, 31 seconds. Get aggressive. Right, I saw that. If you intentionally pick a bad option at any time, you get more opportunities to see how this Taz plays out, since there's 20 to uh, total outcomes. I don't think I'm going to have the time to do 
all 20 on stream, especially if I want to like do a little bit of commentary myself because, you know, react content, I don't exactly want to be lazy. Uh, you know, this 20 minute video could very well turn into 40 or 50 minutes of live stream time. Unless you want that, in which case I will happily do it. <laughs> Wrong answer, idiot. Get grabbed. Ooh, oh, okay. That's new. Perhaps at some point. Yeah, okay. Keep it simple with Nair? Okay, I know the Taz answer is actually do the infinite because that's an actual combo. Uh, but the, the Nair is like... A... Nair you can SDI, ASDI down or whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to do the whole thing. But thank you for uh, bringing that up. I'm glad I saw that. Nice. Future me if you're editing. Cut the segment there. That's a wrap. Nice. That'll be good. I like melee theory. You know, it's funny. I, I find that I'm like... I'm very involved in politics and I read political theory sometimes. I'm not as good at understanding the full, like, stuff behind political theory as I am at understanding melee theory. Which is... I think it's probably just indicative that politics is more complicated than melee, which is not exactly a uh, massive revelation to the whole world. But, uh, you know, I guess that means I'm a better melee player than I am a communist. Hmm, food for thought. I don't know. 